Hey folks, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, you're going to learn about the kinematics equations, which are the equations of motion when we have a constant acceleration. By the end of this video, you'll be able to apply the kinematics equations to use in word problems. So let's go ahead and get started. And to start, let's, let's begin with what our equations actually are. So there are four kinematics equations listed on the left side of the screen. Um, each of them has is a combination of four of the five different variables listed on the right side of the screen. Let's go ahead and go through the variable, variables before we start talking about the equations. So our first vari variable here is s, and we're going to use s to show our displacement. So guys, it's important to know here, s is displacement, not speed. I know it's weird because displacement starts with a d, and s is not d, but um, this is important to know. And the units for displacement are, of course, going to be meters. Now, you might see something in kilometers or centimeters or something like that. Um, that's fine. Just keep in mind that that will affect your final answer and the units that you should use at the very end of this. Um, so next, we have u and v. And u and v are both velocities. u is our initial velocity. And so that's going to be our velocity at the beginning of our story. And v is going to be our final velocity. So the velocity at the end of the story being told in our word problem. So our initial velocity is measured in meters per second, which we could also express as meters times second to the negative one, means the same thing. Um, and final velocity is going to be measured in exactly the same units. Next, we have acceleration. And as you've learned in the lab, acceleration is our change in velocity over time, or something measured in meters per second squared, or meters times second to the negative one, negative two, excuse me. Um, and finally, we have t, which represents time, which we're going to measure in seconds. So what I'm going to recommend, guys, I have listed out all of the units that we use here on the, on the right side of my screen. Please make sure that you remember what units go with each letter, because that's going to be the easiest way for you to identify what your variables, what, what the numbers in your equation actually mean. Now, as you can see here on the left side of the screen, each of my equations has three of those four variables. So for example, my first equation here has veloc final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and time. So this equation would be useful if I knew, for example, my final and initial velocities and my acceleration, and I was trying to figure out how long it took for me to get from my final velocity, my initial velocity to my final velocity. So the trick in this unit is going to be figuring out which equation is the right one for the problem that you're trying to solve. In this video, you're going to learn a few methods for how to do that. Has one, uh, has four of our five variables. So for example, if I, if I know everything except for displacement, um, if displacement is my extraneous variable, then I'll know that this is the equation that I should use because it doesn't have displacement. Now this process sounds complicated, but I promise it'll make sense once we start solving problems. So my preferred method is this one. So I call this the SUVAT table um, because S-U-V-A-T, SUVAT spell, uh, spells out the, the letters, the variables that are in my equations. And what I like to do is I like to condense my given and unknown step of the guess method into this table. So what I do is I'll read the problem, and as I'm reading the problem, I'll use the units that are, that are next to the numbers to figure out what uh, variable each of those numbers represents. So if something is measured in meters, I know it's displacement. If it's measured in seconds, I know it's time, and if it's meter, measured in meters per second squared, or meters times seconds to the negative two, then I know that it's acceleration. Now, my initial velocity and my final velocity both share units, of meters per second or meters times seconds to the negative one, but I can usually figure out from the problem what each, which, which, uh, which number goes with which velocity. So what I like to do is I like to fill out everything that I know in the table. Then what I like to do is put a question mark next to my unknown. And finally, I like to go ahead and cross out Ex uh, my extraneous variable, the variable that does not relate to my, that is not a given or unknown. Doing three th these three things will help you figure out which equation to use. 
because as you remember, as I hope you remember, each of our equations. So with that, let's go ahead and do an example. A car accelerates from rest. I'm going to go ahead and highlight as highlight important information as we go through. So a car accelerates from rest at 20 meters per second squared. What will be the car's velocity after four seconds? So let's go ahead and draw out my SUBOT table. And I can go ahead and put information that I know in my table. So first of all, I know my car is accelerating from rest at 20 meters per second squared. So that word rest, um, and, and specifically the fact that it's from rest, tells me that that's my initial velocity, and that my initial velocity is zero meters per second. Next, my car is accelerating at a rate of 20 meters per second squared, and I can tell from my units here that meters per second to the negative two meters per second squared, that this is an acceleration. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my acceleration category. My, and then finally, I'm trying to find the car's velocity after four seconds. So I know that my time is four seconds and I wanna figure out the car's velocity after. So that tells me that it is the final velocity of the car. And so that word from tells me that it's an initial velocity. That word after tells me that I'm looking for a final velocity. So let's go ahead and figure out my equation. After, well, one thing I have to do, right, is cross off my extraneous variable, which is going to be my displacement. So what I want to do is I want to find the equation that has no displacement. You can see my four equations are on the right. My second, third, and fourth equation all include displacement, so we don't want those. We're going to stick with equation number one. So my equation is going to be v equals u plus a t. Um, just so you guys know, you will always have access to these equations on an assignment. You don't need to memorize them. So again, v equals u plus a t. Um, and I can go ahead now and sub and solve for my final velocity. So my final velocity is my unknown, so that gets to stay as a variable. My initial velocity is zero, and to that I am adding my acceleration times my time. So that is gonna give me a final velocity of 80 meters per second. There we go. That is example one. Let's go ahead and do one more example. Al is driving down the road at 70 kilometers per hour when he sees a deer dart out five meters in front of his car. If he wants to stop before hitting the deer, what is the minimum acceptable acceleration? Let's go ahead and figure that out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I notice that this is not in my standard units. So I'm gonna to need to turn 70 kilometers per hour into meters per second. So first we're gonna get rid of that kilometer. I know I have 1,000 meters in one kilometer. And we'll also get rid of that hour. So there are, there's one hour in 60 minutes. Um, and we have 60 seconds in one minute. I'm gonna multiply across the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and that will give me a velocity of 19 meters per second. So after doing that, I am now ready. Everything else is in standard units, so I can go ahead and fill out my SUBOT table. Starting with listing out my givens. So first of all, I know that my that Al is driving down the road at 70 kilometers per hour. So that's gonna be his velocity at the beginning of our story, right? Because that's before any of the, anything else happens. Um, and so his and so we we trans we uh, transferred from 70 kilometers per hour into 19 meters per second, which will be our initial velocity. I know that from my units being meters per second. And I also know that it is my initial velocity, not my final velocity, because it's at the beginning of my story. It's before any acceleration happens. So Al is driving down the road when he sees a deer dart out five meters in front of his car. So that five meters, we know because it's measured in meters, must be our displacement. He wants to stop before hitting the deer. So he wants to stop within that five meters. And that means that he wants to have a final velocity of zero meters per second in five meters maximum space. And we're trying to figure out his acceleration. So that's gonna be our unknown. That means that time is our extraneous variable. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna circle all the places I see time all over, right? And I'm gonna cross off every equation that includes time, leaving me with my single equation that includes only the variables that I care about. So let's go ahead and plug in our variables. So my equation is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And I can go ahead and I can either solve for my acceleration now or I can go ahead and just sub and solve my variables, which is what I'm going to do because it's a little bit simpler, I think, for y'all to see. So v squared is 0. U is 19, so we're going to square that, plus 2 times a times 5. We can simplify that to say 0 equals 361 plus 10a. And now this is like any algebra equation you've seen before. We're going to solve for a. So we're going to start by subtracting 361 from both sides, giving us negative 361 equals 10a, and then after we divide both sides by 10, we'll get that a is equal to negative 36.1 meters per second squared. And there you go, our minimum acceptable acceleration. So let's go ahead and talk takeaways. There are, so our first takeaway is that there are four kinematics equations. Our second takeaway is that SUVAT tables are helpful for solving kinematics problems. And finally, our last takeaway I mentioned briefly at the beginning, but it's important to know that the kinematics equations only work for situations with a constant acceleration. So if we have any non-constant acceleration, so if our acceleration isn't just a number, then that means that our kinematics equations are not going to work, and you're going to have to figure out another way to solve your problem, such as, for example, using a graph. Thankfully, you most likely will not have to do that. Um, much if at all. But it's important to know that for the future in case you're ever given a problem with a non-constant acceleration. So with that, this is all I have for you. Have a fabulous day and best of luck and happy solving.